Please pray with me. Lord, more than anyone else, you know what's going on within our lives. Even more than we ourselves, you know what is deep inside. And yet you continue to offer your grace. <coughs> By your Spirit, may we trust that your hand is holding us. And now, Lord, I would pray that your Spirit would be at work in our thoughts, in our minds, so that the words spoken and the words heard might be your word. Only when you speak do we have life. Amen. The chicken and the pig were very happy with their farmer. And so they were talking about what they could do to show their appreciation for the farmer. The pig said, I know, let's serve breakfast. The chicken said, how about eggs and bacon? <laughs> and the pig said, you're only involved, I'm committed. <laughs> In recent years, as I come to the rite of confirmation, I feel I need to begin with an apology. That I need to apologize to an upcoming generation for the world you are going to inherit. I look back at the history of when I was your state at your state and uh, our, our country had come off the depression, off, off of the Second World War. There was a great sense of what we could do together. But then we identified the enemy as Russia, as communism. Yeah. And in order to prove that we were better, we had to have more stuff. So we created a consumerist society where we are rich in things and poor in soul and trying to put out, put, figure out where to put all the stuff that we no longer need. As long as you guys have been alive, our nation has been at war. It's not the fast wars that we learned in history. In less than two years we solved the First World War except that the repercussions of that continue today. And war is different because it doesn't pull us all together, but rather some go and some don't. I'm especially appreciative of the conversations I've had here at Emmanuel, people who are serving, people who have served, the perspectives of that, those who have been peacekeepers, but also those who are peacemakers. And you in your lifetime will be called, maybe not to be both, but at least to be a peacemaker. <coughs> and there I, I realized that I'm at the stage in my life where 30 years ago I didn't want to be like this because I didn't want to be an old grouch. <laughs> but what gives me hope is knowing not like old generations have always complained about the younger generation, but because, among other things, in the Bible verses you selected, you have given me reason for hope. The other day I was listening to a bit of a program on television. It was about a man who had been a white supremacist, he had been there, but now he was working to help extricate people. He was dealing with the reality of a shooting in New Zealand and then a shooting in San Diego. And in that, parents are going, I don't know what happened. And he said, yes, that may be true, but here is what we know. They did not start out surfing the internet to try to be a white nationalist. They did not try to find out where they could be hateful. But he said, there is a basic human need. 
and they found that in a way that was spiteful and hurtful and led to great tragedy. He said that they are searching for community, identity, and purpose. Now one of the things I've talked about here, and you may have heard me before, and I'm going to emphasize it again, that one of the lies we have been told is that you have to find yourself by yourself. That growing up means you're making decisions on your own. Yes, you have more and more decisions to be made. That's a part of maturing. But to realize we don't go out and find ourselves by ourselves, but rather who is the community that helps us form our identity. And what the internet has done is it's provided us wonderful pictures of cute puppies. It's provided us stories of people who really need, do need, need stuff. But it has provided us more and more stories of people in isolation, reaching out, and the result is hatred. The idea that in order to find yourself, you have to know who you hate, rather than knowing the community around you that supports you. Community, identity, and purpose. I hope that you are finding that here at Emmanuel. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The society you're growing up with can't even discuss, figure out what truth is. We take a picture. The picture is, well, has it been altered? What is it really saying? Can we deny it? What is there as a basis that we can start a foundation of truth and knowing that who we are. Jesus offers, if you continue in my word, now for sure, I, it, it's not just some ancient book, and how do you know that that came down? But the reality is that it's the community of people who trust this word, who want to live this word, who are challenged by the word, who challenge the word, and yet, who trust that this is the source. It is this community of people built on God's Word. You will know the truth, and that will give you an identity of who you are, and that will set you free. Not free to be in isolation. Not free to do whatever you want. As the... Um, 20th century martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, to be free in Christ is not to be disconnected. The freedom in Christ is not power over. Our image of freedom to offer often is that if I am powerful enough, I can do whatever I want, and that will be the source of freedom. But we find under Jesus Christ that true freedom comes when we commit ourselves and live for. So what is your purpose? Too often the word is whatever. There's a book entitled, I'm using that word, whatever. Is our purpose in life whatever? Or is our purpose in life to be part of God's plan to make the world right again? And because you are committing yourselves to that, I have reason for hope. I acknowledge the challenges of the world you face. And the verses you chose indicate that you have already been aware, you already have walked those dark valleys. But you are here today because you trust there is reason for hope. And because you have reason for hope, I have reason for hope. I trust that Jesus' words are alive in you. That His word gives you your community. Out of that, you know who you are. 
and you hear His call to serve, your purpose in life is bigger than anything anybody could offer you. God has something that you need to do that no one else can do. And when you use that, use your life, commit your life for that purpose, yeah, it's not just providing eggs for breakfast. It's going in on, as your great parents, grandparents said, going full on. It's when you commit yourself to that purpose of God's plan to make the world right again, then you will find great freedom and joy. And I pray that for you.